Guten Tag. Das ist alles, was ich in Deutsch sprechen kann. Aber so, I will switch to English. <laughs> I can understand you in German, but speaking is a bit harder, so I will do it in English. Um, today we're going to talk about complex Joomla migrations. Um, let me introduce myself quickly. I'm involved with uh, the local Dutch community, but also with the international community as a member of the community leadership team. Um, I have a company in the Netherlands, it's called Perfect Web Team, uh, specialized in uh, solving all kind of Joomla uh, solutions. And I have an extension called ACL Manager. My slides will be published on uh, my website uh, later on this afternoon, so you can write down whatever you want, but it will also be available online. I live uh, in Weesp, that's a small town uh, next to Amsterdam, uh, so about three hours drive. And I'm glad to be here again. And today I will talk about complex Joomla migrations. But why do we need to migrate? That's of, because of the Joomla version system. Um, and I think it's good to explain. Can you please call maybe outside? Uh, to explain the version numbering first. So at the moment, the latest Joomla version is Joomla 3.3.3. It's a nice number, but that's a kind of coincidence. Uh, probably in the next weeks, it will change to 3.4.0. So what does all those numbers mean? The first number is the major version. And that only change when we have a big change within Joomla. So a new architecture below the software. Or for example, with Joomla 3, a total new interface so those are the reasons that we change the first number of the Joomla versioning. The second one is what we see changing now almost each six months. So Joomla 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. And new features being added. Uh, for the first time, we now get something removed. But any change that makes in this uh, number change will be backwards compatible. So it can't uh, make your website break. And the last one, the last three in this case, is maintenance release. And that means that bugs have been fixed. Um, and those are really small patches and mainly solving issues that are there right now. It will not introduce new features like tagging. That will only happen in the middle number. So I have a question for you. In this case, Joomla 2.5.2 .2 and we have 2.5.19. Can I see hands who think that 2.5.2 .2 is a higher version than 2.5.19? Nobody? Yeah. I see some doubts. I won't bite. <laughs> it's 19 is the newer. And that's something some people get confused, but I have a more recent version. So you only need to look at the number behind the last dot. So. 19 is higher than 2, so the version on the right is more recent than the one on the left. In Joomla, we have a whole history of the Joomla versions. And let's have a quick look at that. I'm not going into much detail of it, but we started back in 2005 with Joomla 1.10. Uh, and later on, we had Joomla 1.5. We have 1.6, 1.7, 2.5. Uh, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, and now it's going quickly, 3.3, 3.4, and the next version will also be 3.5. So this is a lot of different versions, and the numbering is also a bit weird, like 1.0 to 1.5, while with Joomla 3 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which makes more sense in the end. So let's simplify a couple things. We have Joomla 1. Joomla 1.0, Joomla 1.5, and Joomla 1.6, and Joomla 1.7. Let's call it Joomla 1. We have Joomla 2, Joomla 2.5, and we have Joomla 3, all of three versions. So Joomla 1, 2, and 3. Forget about the rest of the numbers. We just have Joomla 1, 2, and 3. At the moment, which versions are supported by the Joomla project? So we have a timeline, and if we draw a yellow line on where we are right now, we see that it's matching at the moment two versions. 
That's Joomla 2.5 and Joomla 3.3. That will change rather soon because in the next weeks we will have Joomla 3.4. And then you see directly that without too much time, Joomla 3.3 is updated. But all the red ones over here in this scheme are not supported by the Joomla project anymore. So if you're using any of the red versions, you should update, upgrade, or migrate. At least get to a more recent version. The only two right now supported are Joomla 2.5 and 3.3. If you have to build a new website right now, which one would you choose? 3.3? Can you explain why? Yeah, so you're saying when uh, after 3.3, 3.4 will be released and it will be backwards compatible so you can easily upgrade. That's totally right. We also see that the support for Joomla 2.5 is ending at the end of this year. So in December, it will be the last month that Joomla support, actively supports Joomla 2.5. That also means that, for example, when in January 2015, and security issues detected in Joomla 2.5, Joomla won't provide an update. In the end, there will be always some kind of fix, but it's not really actively supported anymore. While, indeed, if you now choose for 3.3, you have new versions each couple months, and you can easily upgrade to that. And if you start using Joomla 3 right now, Michael Bepker shared that this morning as well, you can use it at least to the end of 2018. But maybe that will even be longer. So if you build a new website right now, choose Joomla 3. So Joomla 1. If you're one of the versions, migrate. No doubt. There can be security issues, a lot of issues. For now, Joomla 2. Currently only ver one version. Make sure you're loose using the latest version of Joomla 2. So if you, don't, if you do have a Joomla 2 website, but it's not running 2.5.24, at this moment, you should update. And that's an easy one. You can click on a button. It won't break anything, but it will fix bugs and will improve the security. Basically, the same applies for Joomla 3. Use the latest version for at this moment. So Joomla 3.3.3. So we have a couple different terms. We have migrations, upgrades, and updates. It's a bit in line with the version numbering. If you change, increase the, the first number, we talk about the migration, Joomla 1 to Joomla 2. We talk about an upgrade, if we upgrade from Joomla 3.3 to 3.4 in the next month. We call about an update when it's the last number, fixing bugs, major, minor, maintenance. What is a useful upgrade strategy for your website? So when you build a website, and it has become a bit compl complicated because of the moves within Joomla recently, but basically there are two options. Or you update each time a new version is released, as soon as possible, and then you set the update server to short-term support, or you choose to upgrade from the 0.5 versions to recent. And this was based on the previous strategy Joomla had. Then that we decided like the 0.5 versions will be the most stable ones. So from 1.5 you go to 2.5, and from 2.5 you go to 3.5. But we skipped that. So that only applies to the first versions. So basically right now you should always upgrade as soon as possible. Um, so that was the. Uh, so if you have Joomla 1 right now, you have to migrate your website to Joomla 2 or Joomla 3. Who would suggest to use Joomla 2 right now? Glad you don't. Joomla 3 is actually the only way to go at this moment. And you have to use an extension for that. There is no uh, possibility within Joomla itself, Joomla 1 to upgrade to Joomla 2 or Joomla 3. 
So you have to make use of one of the extensions. You can find them in the extension directory. Uh, they will take care of the migration of the Joomla core, mostly. And some can also support third-party extensions. And that will be the more complicated part, where I will go later on. So is a migration from Joomla 1 to Joomla 3 an easy or a hard one? Hard? Easy? You're right, it depends. It can be very easy if you have a very simple Joomla 1 website with no extensions installed, just the Joomla core, and you're using a template from a template club, which template is also available for the more recent version, you can update within an hour. But if you have a large Joomla 1 website with a lot of extensions available, but many of those extensions are not even supported by the extension developer anymore, so you don't have a Joomla 2 or Joomla 3 version, it's getting pretty hard. So from Joomla 2 to Joomla 3, how can we upgrade? This is just a simple setting change. And Joomla worked hard to simplify the whole upgrade process so we don't have to the, the situation like Joomla 1 to Joomla 2. If you go to the Joomla update components, you will notice that it's currently set in Joomla 2.5 to the long-term support. That means that you only see updates for the Joomla 2.5 series. As soon as you change it to uh, uh, the short-term support, you will see uh, that Joomla 3. Point, at this moment, Joomla 3.3.3 is available. And you can click on Install the Update. Is that easy or hard? Sorry? If it works, it's good. If it works, it's good, yeah. Again, it depends. If you have just the core and your extensions you're using on your Joomla 2 website are also available for Joomla 3, it's an easy one. You can click safely on it. But again, if extensions are not available for Joomla 3, it will get more complicated. But in general, the migration from Joomla 2 to 3 is much easier than the one from 1 to 3. So basically, the Joomla versions are as simple as Joomla 1. You should upgrade. Joomla 2, use the latest version, and Joomla 3, use the latest version as well. Today, we're mainly focusing on Joomla 1, the more complicated ones. But a lot of those uh, things that I will suggest apply to any migration from any Joomla version. So I can still remember my first migration. It was also my first website. And actually, it wasn't even a migration. It was an update. But I was really afraid to, uh, to roll out a new version of Joomla because I was afraid like oh, all my texts are gone and my template and things like that. But it turned out it was really easy because at that time I didn't understand that there was a separation between the server files and all your website data which is stored in the database. And normally, and that changed a bit nowadays, but uh, updating is just changing the server files. And if there are database changes, Joomla can handle that by myself, by the update components. So Joomla will do that for you. So can I see hands of people that still have Joomla 1 websites? So Joomla 1.0, Joomla 1.5, or Joomla 1.6, Joomla 1.7? A couple. The other ones are all set, all the latest version. What's your excuse? Why are you still using Joomla 1? Time? Sorry? Component? So it's your own component. So you're basically using Juno 1.0. <laughs> so, so we have uh, time, uh, custom comp components. So uh, multilingual, right? Yeah, yeah. with uh, with Joomfish and that's not so. Basically, an extension you use, you used in Joomla one is not available for Joomla two, and or that option. Yeah. 
money. I think that are the main excuses. Money. And of course, that's a difficult one. I mean, if you now go to your client, I need money to upgrade your website, that can't be always that easy. The client will not understand. But maybe, and of course it's a bit too late to change that, but think about the website you're building right now. How can you communicate to the client that at some point there will be some kind of migration upgrade? And it's not that easy to explain that you not, don't really know yet what the impact will be, but you can at least share that, that there's probably some budget needed in like a couple of years from now. So maybe suggest that they put aside each year a bit of money so they know like the maintenance of it. Um, another area of it, Joomla 1 is now not supported for already like two, three years. Um, even the question is, is it still needed to really migrate it or maybe a new website is an option. Procrastination, time, do tomorrow, later on, later on this year, all kind of excuses. I can't help you with that. You have to do it right now. I can help you with making it hopefully more clear right now. It can also be very confusing and a lot of things to sort out and to get the overview of your migration is very complex, to get a clear overview of what needs to be done. But in the end, there are no excuses. You have to do it. It's not safe to use Joomla 1. And maybe Joomla Core is safe, but you're probably using a couple other extensions that are vulnerable by now. Um, and even when your website is not hacked yet, it will probably happen somewhere, but it's also possible that, for example, your hosting company is updating their PHP version. So at a certain point, you receive your client, my website looks really weird. And then you have to get into action directly. So you can better do it now and prevent such calls uh, of PHP versions being upgraded. So each migration starts with a couple of questions. And that's for you, for yourself to think about, but also for the client. The first one is, is a real one-to-one -one migration needed. So you have a Joomla 1.5 version. Does that need to be exactly the same in Joomla 3? Like the same components, the same template, uh, etc. Is that really needed? Or do you need a bigger website because the, 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 the requirements changed? Does the client have any frustrations with the current website? I mean, often when we talk with clients about migrations, and you ask, you know, how are you using the website at the moment? Oh, by the way, that's really annoying. Or uh, that would be great if that would be possible. And of course, a new Joomla version uh, opens up a lot of new possibilities already. But talk with your clients about their wishes, their requirements. Uh, maybe that result in that a one-to-one -one migration is not needed, that you only need to transfer the articles and rebuild the rest of the website. Um, maybe they want all kinds of new features, a new design. Uh, a better improved version of the website. A migration is a great moment to talk with the clients about, I mean, the 1.0 websites. Are they a bit old fashioned, mind, meanwhile? Are you really going to put that 1.0 template with font size 8 right now? Or are the new web trends, the new uh, wishes, the responsive design, is that a requirement? So you have to change the template anyway. Or, does the website, is the website not in use anymore? Or are the components that are not in use? I mean, once the, when the website, website was built in the past, they had all kinds of ideas and we need a forum and uh, we want to interact with people. And nowadays, nobody is using the forum. But the software is still there and maybe vulnerable. The extensions. Do you still want the same extensions in your website? Or do you want more fancy ones, better ones? Because you use them for a while and you have to change it. So quite often you can define three types of migrations. The easy one. And those are the most of the times very static websites. So that website has been built. Uh, once in a year somebody changed maybe uh, an article. But it's really not used that much. There are no sales on the website. There is no contact, uh, contact form on the website. So everything is very static. 
uh, usually you can uh, make a copy of that website, uh, start the migration of it, and once you're ready, you simply change the website. You don't have to be, uh, take care of any data loss between the migrations because things have changed on the original after you made the backup of it. So a freeze of the website, and that means that no changes are possible because any change that happens in that freeze period will be lost. Um, that can be a week or even more, like a month. And the downtime, the client doesn't care. That's are the easy ones. You can plan at the moment you want, you can work on it as long as you want, and once you're ready, you publish the website. Then we have the harder ones. Those are the more dynamic websites. And uh, those are changing a lot. Um, and maybe you can say, okay, with the client for uh, this week, we're going to plan your migration, and in that specific week, you can't change articles, for example. So you can't change the menu or whatever. Uh, so you have a bit of uh, time to make the changes, adjust the, the things for the new website. And the doubt time is, for example, for maximum an hour. So you can prepare as much as possible in advance for the actual switch. And the only thing you might have to uh, migrate at the latest, latest moment is, for example, uh, the submissions of, of a form, and that's quite often just a copy of the database table. And the last one are the really complicated ones. And those are often the websites that are still on Joomla 1. And those are the websites that are very dynamic. So things are changing like each hour, each, each 15 minutes, a new article is being published on a big news website, for example. And a lot of people are visiting the website all the time. And they can agree on a freeze period, maybe. That's also not even always possible, but for a maximum of a day. So for one day, we can't change articles, but then that, that's fine. And downtime, each minute the website is down simply costs money because they have a web shop on it or they have some uh, uh, seminars they organize and people can't sign up so they lose money with each minute your website is down. So the preparations for these kind of migrations are very detailed and tested, tested, tested and tested. So for migrations, I have a couple tips and that applies to any migration. The first one is choose Joomla 3. No doubt, don't look at Joomla 2. If you have to migrate, go for 3. You're done, and for the next years, you're done with it. The second one, backup. Always backup. Before you start, make a backup of the website you're going to migrate. And even preferably, if possible, make a backup roll it out on your development environment and start migrating the backup of the website. So don't go playing and mess around with the current live website because one click on the wrong button and it's gone. But then still it's important to have that backup. <laughs> and make sure that backup works. I mean, if you click on the wrong button and your, web, your website is gone because some certain file removed all files from the server and then you think, oh, I can roll out the backup. And then, oh. Um, the backup was on the website itself. So make sure you get the backup on a different location than the site. Make sure you test it properly that you know in case it's needed, you can roll it out easily. Another very important one, and I see that quite often, is start with cleaning up your website. So start removing all modules that are not in use, all plugins, or all components articles that might be not ne no longer necessary. Uh, quite often you see a lot of unpublished articles meanwhile or menu items that have been useful in the past but are no longer needed. Make sure you all put them in the trash. So get that website as clean as possible. The less factors you have that can uh, ha have an effect on a migration, the better. So make sure you start with a clean website to migrate. But make also sure you empty the trash. Because if you put articles in the trash of Joomla, they are still in the database of Joomla, but in a trash can. So also empty the trash in that case. And that applies for, for example, the, the menu items, uh, for the articles, uh, for the modules. They are stored in the trash, so get rid of them. And then make sure you update. Not only Joomla, if you're updating Joomla uh, 1.5.12, 
make sure you first go to Joomla 1.5 dot the latest version of it. Not just Joomla, make sure you update any extension you are using. Because the latest version you have, the more uh, possible it is that you're really uh, having a version that is uh, compatible with the one for Joomla 3, for example. That the extension at that time can detect the changes that needs to be made because you're using the latest 1.5 version of their extension. So that's really important. And quite a lot of people forget about it, but it will save you a lot of hassle if you update everything that's possible. Another important one, and that's not really uh, uh, in Joomla 1, but for example, when you go from Joomla 2 to Joomla 3, make sure the database version of Joomla is completely healthy. And there's a great new feature in Joomla for that. If you go to extensions and then the extension manager, there's a new tab that's called database. And if there are, uh, the structure of your database is not in line with the version you're using, you can simply click on the fix button and make sure that all tables are, have the right columns, the right values. If they don't, it will cause issues in your migration for sure. In 2.5, it exists. In the latest version of 2.5, so get another reason to get to the latest version, this database fix exists as well. So another one is the uh, white screen. Quite often, people start to migrate, and then suddenly, you have a white screen. And a white screen doesn't provide that much information, right? Before you start the migration, make sure you go to the global configuration of your website and go to the server tab and set the error reporting to maximum. In that way, instead of a white screen, an error will be displayed, which will hint you to the issue that is blocking the migration. Quite often, it's, it's, it's something saying in the, the folder path of a certain component and you can detect like, um, ACL manager is uh, uh, causing this fatal error, and that's breaking the process. So you know, you have to update that extension or get rid of it temporarily to make sure you can continue with it. So set it to maximum. Another important one, make sure you test the migration on the same environment. So you can, of course, have a website on a web host and do everything locally, but at the moment, you think, okay, the migration is successful, you publish the, the result of the migration to your web server, it is not working. Because a different PHP version, Peter and I were yesterday talking about it, uh, or other settings are different on your local than on your web host. So make sure before switching the websites on your live environment that you have test the new version as well on the same server settings. Again, test, 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 test. And another test. Make sure you look, click to all the pages. Ask your client to have a look. And ask if they can do what they are normally doing without any issues. So ask them for feedback. It's very helpful. They're great testers as well. And in case of emergency, you always need to have a backup. Uh, so once you're switch, switching your website from the old to the new one, but something went wrong, it can always happen, make sure you can roll back the old website without an issue in minutes. So a typical migration process. Start with a backup. This easy one. Create a copy of the website. So from the current website, um, and in this example, I will do it on a live server, but you can do it locally as well. But for example, copy the website on uh, site.com, make a copy of that in the folder slash 50, Joomla 1.5, for example. Um, install the new Joomla version you're going to migrate the website to. That's often how it works. You install a new Joomla version, and then you install a component that fetch the old data to the new website. So in this example, uh, install Joomla 3 in a subfolder called 3. And then uh, you start to migrate the data, the website data. And that's often done 
by a migration extension, you can find an extension directory. Some work differently. Some you need to install in the Joomla 1.5 website, and they will transfer it to the Joomla 3 website. Others are installed in Joomla 3 and get the data from the old website. So it depends a bit on uh, the extension you're using. Uh, then after you migrated this, the data and the databases, install the Joomla 3 versions of the extension you're using. Quite often, those migration extensions can copy an entire database table, for example, from uh, uh, RS forms, with the forms. You copy the entire table, but as soon as you install the Joomla 3 version, RS uh, forms will detect that your database table is from the 1.5 version, and they will automatically update it and make sure it's working for your Joomla 3 website. So that's the next thing you're going to do. Then adjust the files, for example, the template, where needed. Quite often, you will notice some differences in the, in the front end. So uh, make sure that it's all in the way you want or roll out a new template. But also, and that's quite a lot of work often, is adjust the Joomla settings. Joomla, of course, has new features. Things are changing between Joomla 1 and Joomla 3. So there are new options available, or options that were in Joomla 1 are no longer available. So uh, you have to adjust some settings for modules, menu items, and things like that to make sure it's all displayed properly. And then test the result of the migration. Again, ask your client for feedback. Uh, and when everything is ready, you're going to publish a new website. And what I often do is uh, the live website on .com, I move that to .com slash old. And at that time, the .com is empty. And the new website was ready in Joomla 3. And I moved that to .com. So can, that can we question later on? I think so. Sorry? From uh, this slide? This slide? Yes. The suggestion of our last question add the robots so that your new sites, your template sites will get in next. Yeah. So that was my next oh, so sentence. <laughs> so when you moved your dot old website, uh, Marco is suggesting make sure robots can't index it. I would even say put an uh, Haiti access protection on it. So you can only log in with uh, a certain login box uh, so it can't be indexed, can't be accessed by visitors. And I usually only keep this live for just a couple of days or weeks, depends on the client. And it's just there for reference. You always have like in the end, yeah, but on the old website it was like this and this, and then you have an opportunity to look back at it. Uh, but don't forget to, forget to remove this after a couple of days or week. So what happens when you have a, a complex migration request? So we received a request uh, from a, a larger company in the Netherlands called Exact, and they had a Joomla 1.5 website. And they uh, are selling products and trainings on the websites. Uh, they have a, quite a lot of traffic all the time of the day, mainly during business hours. Um, and they have like I think over 20 or 30 people that are really daily changing the text on the website, publish new things. Uh, they have an entire marketing team that's fine-tuning the, the website all the time. So when I would make a backup of this website now, it's outdated in five minutes. So that's a complex situation. And they had some requests around it. Uh, we only uh, want that the migration uh, will take uh, one and a half day of freeze. So we are happy if we can't change the website for a maximum of one and a half day. And I'm not talking about the, the form submissions or the orders, but mainly changing text and things like that. Uh, they, uh, the maximum downtime was two hours, no more. And the downtime should be planned during the evening hours. Um, at that time, the, the website I just showed is uh, the, a newer version already, but at that time, they really want that the Joomla 1.5 website looked exactly the same as the new one, but running in 2.5. This migration take, took place a year ago, so that was the reason they chose for Joomla 2.5 at that time. All the URLs of the website should be exactly the same, so everything should be accessible. All menus should be moved, all articles, all modules, etc. So basically, there shouldn't be any difference for the visitor, 
and also mainly for the editors of the website. Of course, the interface changed a bit, but everything should be in the same place. So how does that fit in in this whole scheme of a regular uh, backup process, of a migration process? Most of the things can happen in like a couple minutes, but most of the work takes place in adjusting the files, like make sure the template looks exactly the same, uh, and a Joomla settings. And when you have a normal migration, you spend like an hour of, or a day like clicking in Joomla, uh, changing modules, changing menu settings, and after a while, it starts to look okay. But in this case, we're talking about 1,500 articles, 650 menu items, 950 modules, and 20 plus extensions. So you can imagine that clicking through uh, all those articles if you had to change what articles are not that often, but for example, a lot of modules needed changes. It is a lot of work, and it will take you uh, just by yourself at least a couple days. If you have more people, it will use the time, but still, it's a lot of labor work you have to do while you don't have the time available. So, um, what kind of changes um, are possible? An example of Joomla 1.5 versus Joomla 2.5 is that in Joomla 1.5, when you have a menu module, you can set the levels that need to be displayed. In Joomla 1, it's, you set the first level Joomla 0, and the last one is Joomla level 3, for example. But in Joomla 2.5, they don't have the 0 anymore because that was a bit weird, so it's now 1. And because of that, it should be to 4. So this change, is by a migration is in a database zero to three. But that's not correct. So normally you go into this module, make the changes, save it, and then it's done. What you can do is that you record all those changes you make on that website. Why are you doing that? Or are people doing that? You can do a compare, or you can write it down, or you can look directly in the database. There are tools for that as well. Uh, but you can also put, when you know what values in the database need to be adjusted for a successful migration, you can put that in a custom migration script, which runs in a second, but performing all those changes that you would normally do within f via the Joomla interface. So, for example, you can create a migration script called migrate.php, which you call after you transferred all the data from the old to the new website which basically making the changes you want. And I will not go into very much detail about the code I'm going to show in a second, uh, but mainly to give you an expression. There will be a link where you can find this example so you can look at it in, in, uh, more clearly. But in this example, uh, I want to change the modules with the IDs uh, listed over here. And I had to change uh, the start level, those menu changes from two to three, uh, the menu type needs to be adjusted, and for example, the breadcrumbs, also a, a typical example of migration, uh, you are here, uh, is set to hide. Uh, in Joomla 1, there was no option to show the text you are here, but in Joomla 2.5 there is, but if you don't want that, you have to disable it. So those are the kind of changes, and it's just, just three modules. Um, so in that migrate.php, you had to connect with Joomla. That's basically what I'm doing here. So I can talk to the database directly. And when I have that connection, I'm going to get the modules I'm going to change from the database. So you have the IDs over here, and I load those three modules to adjust them directly. In the next step, I'm going to make the changes. And it's PHP code. Uh, you can look it up later on. But it's basically making this change directly in the database rather than doing that via the interface. So the menu type is changed. And for the last module, we set the parameters of show here to zero directly via PHP. And then we have the changes we have made and the script injects them in a database. So they update the values of the database to what I need for this migration. Uh, another example is that you can correct component-specific changes. Uh, in this example of this migration as well, they were using Zoo, but in the Joomla 2.5 version, all access settings were not filled in. So all Zoo items were not displayed on the website. And with a couple hundred Zoo items, 
you can do in batches, change that. But it's easier to simply say everything should be set to one. So again, in the same script, I get to the uh, zoo item database and I set the access to one. So to give an expression, this script is running everything you should normally perform. If you want to look closer at this example, it's listed on GitHub, so you can find this link as well in, uh, in my slides. Uh, and you can use it. This is working. Make sure you adjust the modules to whatever you need, but mainly to give you an impression what's possible with such custom script. So because of this custom script, you can reduce the time a lot. Um, so what we did at the time is we created a very clean Joomla tree installation where we started to migrate the data in. And we started with a clean uh, site and we make a backup of that. So we can use roll it out each time to make sure we test the script, get that clean version back and test it. So we test it, check if the result is what we expected. If not, we adjust the script, we test it again, uh, adjust the script and test it again, adjust it. And that took like a couple weeks to get it really fine tuned that everything was exactly as we want. So then there's the day where the actual migration took place. For that day, we created a, a, a script. So everybody involved with this process knows exactly what will happen at what time of the day. So for example, this day started with a kickoff meeting with all the departments involved, uh, sharing the latest information. It's always good to communicate, make sure that people know what to expect during that day, what they can, what they can't. Uh, then the latest preparation started. So, um, of course, we created backups earlier during the process, but there might be changes that have been made at that day that are not in that script yet. So we created a backup of the website and compared that with the ones we used for the migration script. And in that way, we could see if the migration script needs updates. Um, and adjust, adjust the script if needed. Um, then we started with the Joomla 1.5 preparations. And this is basically the tips that I provided earlier. Make sure everything is emptied and also make sure that all items are checked in. Uh, that also allows easy to see if later during the day people start to work on an article that are uh, not in the migration. And then the Joomla 2.5 website preparation started. So we rolled out that base installation of Joomla 2.5 uh, installed SP upgrade. That's the, the extension. Uh, it's a commercial extension, but we're using that because we have the best results with that for migrations. And uh, we synced all static files already to the new website. So think of all the images on the website and all the template files that are already prepared uh, in advance. Those don't change during the day. So you can make sure that that's already there because quite often the migration of a lot of images and a lot of PDF files takes a while. Um, so at that time, uh, almost just before lunch, we had the new version prepared with all files and everything that is not part of the actual data that has been migrated. So this was a very clean website at that time. So then we had lunch and then we continued testing, testing, testing with the latest data we had. Um, and also ask in a, during this time an entire team of the company to look to the website and test the migration result we just did. So we basically did the migration already, what we planned for later day, day but to check to make sure that everything is working as expected. And then um, uh, starting uh, at one o'clock, we, we start to roll out the fixes if needed and prepared, of course, an offline page for the couple of minutes of downtime so people know the website is in migration offline and will be available soon again. So at four o'clock in the uh, afternoon, it was the final opportunity for all the content editors of the website to make adjustments to article. So at that time, we closed the website. They were no longer allowed to log in on the back end and we simply prevented that so people couldn't make an, an, an uh, expected changes. Um, but visitors can still use the website. So they can still browse, they can still order whatever they want. Then after four o'clock, we did the final test migrations. And because we said, okay, from this point, you can't change any articles anymore, we knew pretty sure that there wouldn't be hardly any differences but, uh, next to the, the, the f submitted form data, for example. And then pizza time, 
And at seven o'clock, the real migration process started. Or actually, not really yet, the final checks. So is the Joomla 1.5 site ready? Is the Joomla 2.5 site ready? Uh, are the database tables all there where they should be? Uh, is the required software we need for the migration working, up and running? Does our internet connection work properly? We phoned the hosting company to make sure that they were ready with their team on the hosting site for any emergency issues at that time. And then at nine, uh, quarter past seven, we start to migrate it. Um, so we had for this specific migration, we had a specific manual, and I will show you in a minute. And only during uh, this time, the website was planned to be offline for visitors. And after the migration, it went successfully, um, we started to monitor the website. So we didn't went home directly. We made sure that everything was running stable, that the website could handle all visitors, uh, that the new contact submissions came in properly, things like that. In case of a bigger issue, we had that emergency uh, revert manual ready. So we could roll out the old website back in a minute if it was really needed. And again as well, uh, we made sure that the old website was available for reference behind a password. And then we celebrated with Joomla Sproot Waffles, a Dutch cookie, uh, but that was part of the, 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 the project. If we make it successful, we're going to eat Sproot Waffles. So that was the celebration moment. And I was happy to go home even before it went dark. So how did that migration manual from those 15 minutes look like? The first step was to uh, set exact.nl offline. That is just a simple uh, chatting scene. So we estimated it will took like 30 seconds. The next step was to backup that version. Again, backup, backup, backup. Make sure you have the backup available. So that took like five minutes. Of course, tested. We knew it will be around five minutes. Then uh, we started the migration of the Joomla data via uh, the component SP upgrade. Uh, and that was basically the user tables, the articles tables, the news feeds, uh, they were using that, uh, the menus and the modules. So really the Joomla core data. Besides that, we had a list of tables we simply copied from the old database to the new database, all related to extensions, some custom extensions, some general extension they used, um, so there was simply a copy from the old database to the new one. And then we had a manual of a couple operations we had to perform. And that's mainly installing those new versions because the, by installing those extensions, they detect what database changes are needed and make sure that their extension data is adjusted as needed. And for example, in VirtuMarked, uh, you had to click on a button uh, and we also at this time, at this time, run or a custom script, which performing all those changes we would normally do in a couple of days. Uh, they switched to the Joomla Advanced Search, so we had to start the indexation of all the articles with the uh, uh, Finder. Uh, we fixed all asset issues because of the ACL, which wasn't in uh, 1.5. Click on the button. Um, we configured the front end and back backend access files, had the access files correctly. We checked the uh, uh, memcache configuration, published the uh, uh, extension, there's an RSS extension, and cleared the cache. So those were a couple of actions that we quickly had to perform in Joomla. Uh, tested many times, so we knew we can do that in two minutes. And then it was time to check the result. And at this time, the new website was already there without any changes, but we asked the team go look in there and we decided, okay, you are going to look in this section, you are going to look in this section. So we needed a couple minutes, a lot of people checked different areas on the website. And when they all said green light, we could move the Joomla 1.5 website uh, to our archive and move the new one back to the root. So it was available. So the last adjustment, and it's important to not forget, to adjust the, tempor uh, the temporary file in a log folder in a configuration and then we could enable the website again. Of course, we had the emergency revert a manual. Uh, that was a pretty simple one, basically the same. Uh, make sure we have that website available in a folder, and if needed, we move that back in a couple seconds. 
So we could result, we would do that in uh, uh, 30 seconds if needed. So in the end, we didn't have to, uh, it, the migration only took like six minutes. So instead of 15 minutes, the website was only down for six minutes and within that six minutes, all the data was migrated and a new website was live. So of course the client was pretty happy with it, uh, that it was all like wished and even better. I mean, they could keep changing the content until uh, in the afternoon. <coughs> but we don't have to forget the preparation time. I mean, it's six minutes, the actual migration, but all the preparation of testing, testing, creating that custom migration script took almost three weeks. So that is a lot of work in the end. So complex migrations are mainly about testing and making a custom script. So you make sure that everything is working exactly as you expect. You can't have any surprises during the migration of such websites. Um, I've written an article about this migration as well in the Joomla magazine uh, earlier this year in Mar March. So this uh, link will be available on my website as well. The custom migration script example uh, is published on uh, GitHub and these slides will be available in, in a bit on uh, my own website. So thank you for coming and I think it's almost time for lunch. Um, let's say, if the, are there any questions? And otherwise it can be during the lunch, but we have time for one question. <laughs> Yeah, so, so the question is, what happens with multilingual websites with those complex migrations when you have to move from Joomfish to the Joomla core because multilingual is now available? So um, that would have made this migration uh, much more complicated. Um, if possible, it's great to be able to have a freeze day. You can, uh, there are some extensions that are available that can get Joomfish data to the Joomla, but you still have to make some adjustments. So if you can get uh, with your client that you can work on it for a day, depends on the, si uh, the, s the, the size of the website, that might be an option that you can say, okay, today you're not going to change the content, so you have a day that you can make sure everything is set up right, and then you put it live. But if this website would have been multilingual, then a very specific custom script where even another two, three weeks time uh, would have been there. So we really separated the um, Yumfish data and make sure that's all transferred correctly in the Joomla database. So it can be done with a custom script, but requires a lot of work and development time to make sure that happens. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions later on, there's lunch. I will be there. I will be here the rest of the day. Uh, so thank you for coming. <laughs>